I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on Vectors Introduction. Here we are going to consider all these topics beginning from physical quantities and their relation with vectors. This is especially kept here since some of my subscribers have suggested that they haven't taken physics and they want to do vectors. So let me make a note here physics or no physics it is vectors made simple so when you go through my series you'll find it doesn't really matter whether you have taken physics or not I'll explain you as and when the terms come okay after understanding a few terms which are physical quantities, we'll move on to understand difference between scalars and vectors, how to represent vectors, three ways, words, symbols, and diagrams. Then we'll have a small quiz based on our learning on representing vectors. Now, vectors have both magnitude and direction, and there are two common ways of representing direction of vectors. One is called true bearing, the other one is quadrant bearing. We'll look into these and have few examples to convert from one to the other. Now vectors can be represented in two dimensions, we say R2 or in Cartesian plane and also in three dimensions, the space. Then we'll have some vector equations to work with and a small quiz to make sure that we understand all the concepts which we have touched upon in this part of introduction to vectors. So let's begin by understanding the basic physical quantities. You will realize that vectors make you understand all physical quantities better. Now there are few terms which are going to come again and again, which are common for students of physics, these are mass, length and time. Most of the units are related with MLT, mass, length and time. Now the terms like position, displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, work done and torque. Let's talk about these terms a bit. That will give you an edge even if you have not taken physics so far, right? So we'll just talk about it. So this is our Cartesian plane. We are talking about two dimensions. So let me write two dimension. Sometimes we say R2. We put square kind of a thing here. X and Y origin. Now when I say position, position really means identifying where a point is. For example, if my point is at this position, in a Cartesian plane, I can always represent this by some coordinates, right? So let's say the coordinate point is 3, 4. So we write x coordinate first and then the y, and that becomes the position, right? So when we do in context with vectors from the origin, we say, well, this is a point P, which could be indicated like this. So you'll understand it better if I write this as O P, right? So we are, we are giving a direction. The direction is from O to P and the length is, this unit is three units and here it is four, Pythagorean theorem. So we say magnitude of O P is square root of three square plus four square, which is square root of nine plus 16, which is 25 or square root of five square root 25 is 5. So we can always say that point P is 5 units away from origin, right? And uh, its position is 3, 4, right? So under, you understand the position, correct? Okay. Now let us say I move this point from here to some other position. Let's say uh, this point moves to that point. So I'm taking some easy points to work with. So here the 
x value let's say is 5 the y value obviously is 0 that is the x intercept let's call this point as q so what we see here is that there is a displacement so the object moves from p to q right so when that movement is there then we'll use this movement as displacement so displacement is change in position so i hope this term is also clear correct so displacement is change in position now we could have done all this in context with time right so let us say that the object moves from p to q in time t for example then the displacement pq divided by time t so we can say the magnitude of pq displacement divided by time will give us velocity do you get an idea so velocity basically is rate of change of displacement is it okay so we're not getting into details but there are a few terms which i think are important to understand so velocity is rate of change of displacement and displacement is actually change in position right do you see that now okay and acceleration is actually rate of change of velocity perfect so i hope all these things are clear they are very much related all of them will be treated as vectors and we will see why and how okay all have direction that is kind of important magnitude i'm writing here but it's too early to say that we'll understand it in just a minute now the other terms here are force work done and torque now let me write down force as in our layman's language ability to do work is it okay so it is something which can move things right so that's the force being applied now whenever you apply force what you can do here is we can do two things one if this force is being applied here you could move it right or you could turn turn something within force so whenever that turn is there then that results into torque so turn results into torque and work done is kind of displacement is it okay so so these are a few physical quantities which are all vectors which we have talked about i mean these quantities position displacement velocity acceleration these are all vectors force is a vector however work done is scale not vector is a scalar we will see why soon okay torque turning is a vector we will see why but i hope with this your introduction to physical quantities is over and you don't need to know more than this okay let's move on so now let's talk about vectors and scalars vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction simple as that scalar is a quantity that has only magnitude so let me write scalar here and vectors i would like you to make a list of items i mean just write down a list of items which you think are scalars that means only magnitude we are looking for and here we are looking for magnitude plus direction do you get an idea so we are looking for physical quantities where only magnitude is enough to describe that quantity and we are also looking for physical quantities 
where magnitude along with direction is required to describe a quantity. Let me give you a few examples. Let's start with one which is, let's say distance. So when we say distance, we can say, well, I walked today two kilometers, right? Now it is immaterial whether I walked north, south, east or west, I covered a distance of two kilometers. Only magnitude number two is enough, correct? So that is why it is scalar. The other quantity, which is a vector, but kind of similar, not same, similar, is displacement. Displacement is that I move from here to there in a particular direction. Do you see that? So I walk two kilometers north. So if I add two kilometers north, that becomes displacement. I have attached direction to it does make sense to you well similar to this is speed speed of 100 kilometers per hour on the other end we have velocity so whenever you say velocity you will say 100 kilometers per hour and you have to add direction let's say northeast so that was the direction in which the movement was there so this becomes vector. So I hope you got an idea of what scalar is and what vector is. To add to this list, I mean, we could have uh, mass, for example. Mass is the matter contained in a body. So if I say that I, my mass is 75 kg, for example, then, then that's the matter contained in a body. On the other hand, uh, on the other side, we could have weight. This is a force by which a body is attracted towards the center of the earth. So we can say 75 kg weight. Do you understand? So when I say weight, it changes with position, right? So it is always acting downwards towards the gravity. On moon, for example, your weight will be much lesser than what it is here, right? Maybe one sixth. Okay. So, so I hope by this you got some idea of scalars and vectors. Scalars have only magnitude and vectors have magnitude and direction. Is that clear? Now many quantities could be added into this list. All numbers, for example, any number as such, age, for example, area, volume, temperature, height are all examples of scalars. Do you understand? Now here we could have force, frictional force, right? Friction, it acts against the direction of movement, right? So torque, which we talked about, these are vectors and related to other quantities are velocity we have taken, acceleration, That is the rate of change of velocity. Is that okay? So likewise, we could have many components here, which are both magnitude and direction. So they will be considered as scalars. Now we have understood what vectors are. Vectors have two things. One is the magnitude. And the other thing is direction. Now we will see how to represent vectors. A vector can be represented in words, in a diagram, or in symbol. So there are many ways. These three are very popular. Words, we'll talk about diagram, or symbols. Now, when I say words, let us say we want to describe something. We can say car moving with velocity of 80 kilometers per hour northeast direction right so in short i have written that a car is moving with 
velocity of 80 kilometers per hour in the direction north east. So that is the direction. So I have actually specified a vector. Now if I have to show it as a diagram, I can always show it here. So 80 kilometers per hour, that means let me have a scale. Let's say this represents, uh, let us say 20 kilometers, right? So let's say this is 20 kilometers. Now direction is northeast. So north, this is north for us, right? East. So it is along this direction, somewhere along this line, that is northeast, right? Now we are saying that that much length, this is our scale, is 20 kilometers. So 20, 40, 60, 80. Does it make sense? So I say from here, like this. So that becomes a representation of the vector which we are calling as velocity. Do you understand now? So that is the vector velocity in the form of a diagram now. Do you see that? So in the diagram, we could add the magnitude as 80 kilometers per hour and this direction by saying 45 degrees. That makes sense, right? From east, that becomes northeast. If I introduce a scale here, 20 kilometers, then I don't have to write 80 kilometers per hour, right? So it is 20 kilometers per hour, I'm sorry. Okay, so that becomes a diagram. And symbol is something like this. We say velocity V is equal to magnitude of 80. We put it always like an absolute value. And direction could be written as, we normally specify it from north, from north also, it is 45 degrees east, right? I took an angle which was like this. So we could say uh, north 45 degrees east. We'll learn more about this nomenclature, but you should read this as 45 degrees east of north, right? So you say 45 degrees east of north. So that is how this vector V symbol can work. So we can write here vector V with a line there on the top that indicates vector. In books, it will be printed bold. So I'm just like this. That could represent vector. Diagram, you have seen. Do you see that? Now, I'll leave this for you to explain. How will you explain this vector? So I'm just saying the direction is kind of like this. And in this scale of 20, that becomes 40, right? So that becomes 40 kilometers per hour. As an exercise, I would like you to represent this vector A in the form of words. Describe this in the form of words. Where that is north, this is east, south, and west, okay? And uh, let me write down this angle from here to there as... Uh, let's say 220 degrees, okay? So let this be the case. You need to ex explain or write this vector in form of words and symbol. Okay, let's move on. So here we have a small quiz for you. Question number one, identify vectors from the following quantities. So these are all printed for you. Height, speed, weight, mass, area, volume, temperature, distance, force, torque, age, work done, friction, velocity, displacement. Take your time and mark them as vectors and scalars. So what I will do here is for vectors, I'll just put that kind of a green circle around and then you can check your answer. Is that okay? So in the first line, this is scalar, this is scalar, weight is a vector, mass, area, volume are all scalar, temperature is scalar, distance scalar, force is a vector, torque is a vector, age, work done are scalar, friction is a vector, velocity is vector, and displacement is also a vector. So I hope you got them all right. Perfect. Question number two here is, 
represent the following vectors geometrically. The first one here is a baby's weight of 3.5 kg b, a car heading southwesterly direction at 80 km per hour c, a person walking around a circular track traveling at 5 km per hour heading due west. Perfect. So take your time, represent all of them as vectors and then check with my solution correct so these are the three which I am going to just represent in few seconds so the first one here is baby's weight of 3.5 kg right so let us say that my scale is that this length is 3 kg right 3 kg okay I'm taking keeping it simple so so if I represent the baby's weight from this point, then that length of 3 in addition 0.5, so a bit more, represents the weight of 3.5 kg. Do you see that? 3.5 kg weight. And this direction, as you know, is south. Now, in our diagram, it represents south, but we are saying this represents downwards. So strictly speaking, I do not need to make this coordinate. Is it okay? So strictly speaking, I don't have to make this coordinate. So let me cancel this. And what you should be doing here is, after representing the scale, just on a blank sheet of paper, draw like this. So that represents baby's weight of 3.5 kg do you understand now this is the correct answer okay so we'll not worry about east west north south in such cases it is downwards okay that's how it is okay now the next one here is car heading southwesterly direction at 80 kilometers per hour so this is now south, this is important, west. When we say southwesterly, then it means this direction, right? Now, our scale here is, let us say, this is, this is 40. So we'll go 40 and 40, so this becomes 80, southwest. Perfect. So you could always give it... A symbol velocity v which is 80 kilometers per hour right this is this is 40 kilometers per hour scale is it okay and this direction will be 45 degrees does it make sense that is how we are going to represent it so in such cases the the beginning of the arrow or the vector I should say is at the origin we call that as the tail. This is the head with an arrow, okay? Giving you the direction. The last one here is a person walking around a circular track traveling at 5 kilometers per hour heading due west. So circular track makes sense. Just make a circle. Okay. And at which point do you head west? Means this is west, right? So if you are walking in this direction, let's say, so here you are heading north, right? Tangent gives direction here. So in this case, it is clear that if you are at this point, you will be heading west. So position is right there of the person. Does make sense to you, right? And of course, we're walking with a constant speed. Speed is constant, not changing. It's five. Velocity changes at every point since the direction changes, right? So, change in direction represents change in velocity. Do you see that? Magnitude is constant. However, since the direction is changing, the velocity itself is changing. So I hope that makes sense, right? So now let's move on and uh, 
talk about how to represent angles in vectors. Direction of vectors. Now there are two very popular ways of representing direction of any vector. One is known as azimuth or true bearing. The other one is quadrant bearing. Now whenever we're talking about navigation in space, at that time it is uh, most of the time angle is measured from north in clockwise direction and it is a three digit number including leading zeros and that is how you represent any position in true bearing right so let me represent this uh, and then we'll talk about it more so here you see in our coordinate system we write north east west and south Now, in true bearing, which is also known as azimuth bearing, all the angles are measured from north clockwise direction. That is to say, if I have something like this, in that case, we are going to measure the angle from north. What angle does it make from north? Right? Definitely it is more than 90. Let us say it is 40 more than 90. I could say this is 130 degrees. Does make sense? So we say that in this case the vector, let me call this vector as A. So we say A is at bearing of 130 degrees. Do you get an idea? Right? So that is how we are going to describe the direction of this particular vector. Right? So let me take another vector. Let's say we have a vector which is kind of like this, where this angle from north is definitely more than 180, less than 270. So let us say this angle here is 225 degrees. So in that case, we'll say vector B is at a bearing of 225 degrees. Do you see that? So it is vector B. I have not mentioned any magnitude here. It could be written anything. But for the time being, we are concentrating on direction. Is that clear to you? So that is how we represent the vectors in direction clockwise from north. See, there are always three digit numbers here three digit numbers okay now the other way to represent the same vectors direction is measurement between 0 to 90 degrees east or west of north south line so this is the north south line for us correct so let me highlight this north south line that is the north south line so angle between 0 to 90 degrees between north south line so we'll represent both these angles in quadrant bearing. For A, what is the angle? You can see that from north-south line, it is kind of closer from south, so we will represent this angle. So we'll write this as vector A is at a bearing of, I will, the angle is from south, since it is 130, it is 50 less, right? 50 degrees east. Do you see that? So the direction of A will be given as 50 degrees east from south. Do you understand? So we'll read this as 50 degrees east from south. As far as B is concerned, the direction is, now we have to always give less than 90 degrees. So from south, how much it is? This angle, right? Since it is 225, what we can do here is we can take away from 225, 
we can take away 180 degrees, right, to get our angle. So that gives you 5, and if you take from 12, it is 45 degrees. Is it okay? So we can see that this is from south 45 degrees west. Does it make sense to you? So that is how you are going to write the same angles in quadrant bearing. So I hope the concept is clear. So basically it has three parts. So when you are talking about quadrant bearing, it has three parts. One, two and three. So that is the angle. So it is saying angle of 45 degrees. In which direction? West. From where, right? To which direction? And from where? So that is how you are going to read it. So I hope this is absolutely clear. Let's have a few examples to work with. Here are practice questions for you. You need to convert each true bearing angle as quadrant bearing. 120 degrees, 300 degrees, and 210 degrees. Question number four is, write the true bearing angles for each of the following. We are given 50 degrees east of north, 30 degrees west of south, 40 degrees west of north. You can pause the video, answer these questions, and then look into my suggestions. Now, before we convert, it's a good idea to sketch also, right? So let me sketch them one by one. The first one, 120 degrees. When we say true bearing, it is from north, right? So 120 means 90 plus 30, right? So, so it could be kind of like this, where this angle here is 120 degrees. That means this is 90 plus 30 degrees, correct? So from north-south, we have to say. So from south, it is how much away? It is 60 away. Do you see that? So we'll write this as from south, 60 degrees towards east. Does it make sense to you? That is how it is going to be, right? Since... The quadrant bearing, this angle in the center, should always be less than 90 degrees. Now let's look into the next one, which is 300 degrees. That means 60 less, right? So kind of like this. So here, the angle from north is, this is north. When I say this is 300, it means that is 60 degrees. Full circle is 360. So we'll write this as north 60 degrees towards west. But you will read as 60 degrees west of north. That is how you're going to read it. Is it okay? Now that is for you to do 210 degrees. Now let's do these three now. Okay. So let me take up B and C this time. I'll sketch them here. Part B is... We are looking from south, 30 degrees is the angle towards west. So we read like this, 30 degrees west of south, south, right? So 30 degrees west of south. So from south, 30 degrees west, kind of like this. Do you get it? So this much is 30 degrees. So how much is it from north? From north, it is 180 degrees plus 30 degrees, correct? Which is 210 degrees. So that becomes the true bearing. Is it okay? That is how it should be. Here we have from north 40 degrees west. 40 degrees towards west from north. So that is the direction. Do you see that? So this is 40 degrees. That is what we are given. So, how much is the angle from north? That is what we are looking for. It is 360 degrees minus 40 degrees. Is it okay? 320 degrees. That is the bearing. Now, if you write only bearing, it means true bearing. 
You get an idea, right? That is how it should be. Now it is for you to answer this question. Remember, when we write in true bearing, it has to be in three places with leading zeros. Okay, that is kind of important to understand. Now here it is from north 50 degrees east. That means, that means kind of like this. Let me give you the answer. It's already kind of known to you. From here it is 50 degrees. So what is the true bearing? Some of you will write 50 degrees. That is wrong. You have to write 050. That is why that question has been left for you. So I hope you have made a note of this. Let's move on and not talk about vectors in two dimension. So as we saw, vectors could be represented in two dimensions or in three dimensions. In two dimensions, when I say, then R2 plane or Cartesian plane represents the vectors. So we could have X and Y coordinates. In any vector, for example, if I say vector V is, you can put it in the square brackets and we can say 3, 5. It really means that you move three units, one, two, three units along the X, one, two, three, four, five units along Y from the origin with the tail and head at the point P, I should say, three, five. If you connect, you get your vector V. Do you see that? So that is how you represent vectors in two dimension. We can write vector u as, let us say, minus 3, 1. That really means minus 3 is in the direction 1, 2, 3, and 1. So that vector here represents u. It does make sense to you, right? So that is how you represent vectors in a Cartesian plane. Now, vectors could also be represented in two dimension using angle and, and uh, the magnitude. For example, vector A, if I write this vector A as 10, which is the magnitude, right, uh, and the direction bearing angle, bearing of 0, let me write... Uh, 0, 80 degrees, right? So, 0, 80 degrees means that from north, it is kind of like this, 0, 80 degrees. 80 degrees from north, right? 10, so we'll kind of have a length which will be 10 units. Do you see that? So, this vector is the vector A, where the angle is 80 degrees from north or you can see from east it is 10 degrees. Does it make sense to you? So that is how you represent angle and the magnitude. Perfect. Now as an exercise what you can do is you can think about giving value to this vector B for example, right? So vector B could be, let's count. So that is 1, 2, 3. So Let's say 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And on this side, let us say this was 5. Let's say this is this is 9. Okay. So we can call this as minus 8, 9 as our vector B. Does make sense to you. So likewise, we could represent vectors in two dimensions. Now, when you do so, we can also find magnitude of vectors. So let me extend this to find magnitude of each vector. So magnitude is this length, right? Length. So if you use Pythagorean theorem, then for vector v, the magnitude will be square root of 3 square plus 5 square, which is 9 plus 25 square root. And then you can calculate its decimal value or 9 plus 14 and 34 square root. Okay. So something like this could be given as length of the vector. So in general, if I have a vector, let us say the vector 
with us is x, right? Uh, no, let me not use x as a vector. Okay. So let me use a vector p, for example, as x, y. In that case, magnitude of vector p could be represented by its absolute value, which is equal to x square plus y square square. Does it make sense to you? So that becomes the magnitude of a vector in R2 or two dimensions. Sometimes we write R2, which stands for two dimensions. Two dimensions means, for example, one dimension is length, the other is width, x or y, something like this. Is it okay? Now, let us see how to represent vectors in three dimension, R3 or space, right? So now we're talking about three dimensions. Let's take an example. Look at the corner of your room. So that wall corner gives you view of your three dimensions. So we normally take x-axis along this direction, y and z. So these are our three axes. They are always at right angles to one another. So this is at right angles. This is also at right angles. This is also at right angles. Do you see that? So these are the three axes. If I have to represent a vector in space, let's take an example. Let's say vector v is being represented by coordinates along x, y, and z as, let's say, 3, 4, and 5. That really means that, let me sketch this for you. We go 3 along the x-axis, 1, 2, and 3, right? So that becomes 3 along the x-axis. 4 along y, so 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So we kind of make a plane here for base, for example. This becomes a base for us. So this point here, we have not moved along z. So this point here will be 3, 4, and 0. We didn't move along z. This point will be just 3, 0, 0. We only moved along the x direction. Does it make sense to you? Now, if I move from, this is 3, 4. So if I use 5 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 5, then that point, this point here, is 3, 4, 5. This point here is 3, 4, 5. Do you get it? And the vector which connects from the original position to this point is the vector v. Correct? Now, to give you a better view of the same thing, you could make a kind of a box here. From every point on the base, if you move upwards, do you see that? So, so you'll get parallel lines like this. So, five units up, right? Five units up, you move you kind of get a box like this. Do you see that? Uh, let me just extend this now. Anyway, so that gives you a three-dimensional look. That is how you represent your vectors in three-dimensional sp space. As an exercise, try to put points, coordinates to each point, okay? For example, this point, you came from 0, 0, 0, only moved in the y direction, so this point will be 0, y direction it was 4, 0. Do you get an idea? Correct? So that is how you could put all the points, right? So here, you have not moved along the x value. So it is 0, 4, 5. Correct? In this way, you moved only along z. So it would be 0, 0, 5. At this point, you have moved along x. You are in x, z plane. So this point will be, you move three units, but you did not move along y, so that's your point. So this basically represents x, z plane for you. And here this plane is x, y plane. Do you see that? x, y plane. And this one behind is y, z plane, right? So this is y, z plane for you. So in three dimensions, that is how you can represent vectors. So I hope it is 
absolutely clear. You'll learn more about this in the next section. Now here, we'll kind of write down a few important concepts about vectors. We've already seen what is the magnitude of a vector, right? So if I say that this is my vector A, where the length is representing, let's say, 10 newtons. So I'm this time representing this as a force of 10 newtons, right? Now, and the direction, let me give simple direction, north, east. Is it okay? So that is the direction I've given, a force of 10 newtons along northeast. So this 10 is the magnitude. So the magnitude here is 10 newtons, right? That is the magnitude. Okay. Now with respect to this, let's talk about other values. Opposite vectors are vectors which have same magnitude but opposite direction. So, if I have to draw opposite vector, I will draw it kind of like this. So, this vector is the opposite vector, which we could also write as minus a. Do you see that? So, so minus a is opposite vector. Do you see that? So, the idea is, let's say this vector is b for us which is minus a. So what happens? If I add a and b, which is, we are adding a with minus a vector, you get zero. In vectors, whenever you get zero, it is also a vector. So this is a very special vector, which is called zero vector. It has a direction which is not defined. So it's kind of tricky. Magnitude is zero, direction not defined. So let me, uh, it has a direction not defined. So we say direction not defined. Magnitude equals to zero. Do you see that? That is your zero vector. So, when you add equal and opposite vectors, when you add equal and opposite vectors, then sum is zero vector. Doesn't make sense to you, right? So, that is how we see the vectors, right? And that thing which I made here, for example, I could write something like this. Let me write within this. That vector A is equals to vector negative of vector B. Do you see that? So vector A is negative of vector B. Does it make sense to you? Where B is equal and opposite vectors. So it kind of flips and that forms an equation. Do you understand? So this kind of things are called equations. So if I have a parallelogram, let me sketch one and then we'll, we'll write few equations, right? Let's say, let's say this is a parallelogram where these sides are parallel, correct? And let's say the vectors are P and Q. This is P and this is Q. Now let me name the places like O, A, B, C. Then in this particular parallelogram, we could always say that vector O, A is equal to vector O, A is equal to C, B. Do you see that? We could also write that vector A, B is equal to minus CO. So that becomes an equation, equating vectors, right? So that is how we look into the equation of vectors. So let's move on. I hope this concept is clear. Now let us see if we have really understood all the concepts of uh, our equation, equal vectors and zero vectors. Here is a question. 
zero vector equal vector and opposite vectors which of the following statement is true a b c d we are given four different statements statement a if two vectors have the same magnitude they are equal you need to answer if it is true or false b if two vectors have same magnitude then they are either equal or opposite vectors c is if two vectors are parallel then they are either equal or opposite vectors d sum of opposite vectors is a zero vector sum of opposite vectors is a zero vector so these are the statements for you you have to write whether they are true or false well here is the answer all are false now why let's look into it the very first one is if two vectors have same magnitude they are equal well i could take a vector like this the length gives me magnitude the other one like this length gives me magnitude but they can have different directions do you see that so they are not equal since they have different directions okay second one if two vectors have same magnitude then they are either equal or opposite no they are not as you have seen here right c if two vectors are parallel then they are either equal or opposite well these are the vectors parallel means they are in the same direction but the other could be scalar multiple so what we say here is that the other vector could be many times bigger or smaller do you see that so there is a term which you'll soon learn the other vector is a scalar multiple so if they are parallel then we say they may not be absolutely equal but they are scalar multiple right they could be smaller or bigger d is sum of opposite vector is a zero vector not necessarily let's say this is one vector and the other vector is kind of like this now if you add them up then the net result will be kind of this much do you see that so it is not zero so sum of opposite vector is a zero vector is also false so i hope that makes sense so that brings us to the final test questions on this topic of introduction to vectors now we are almost at the end of our video on introduction of vectors i hope all the concepts are clear let us take two questions as test question number 5 vector ab has tail at minus 1 minus 2 and head is at 2 2 sketch the vector ab that's one part second one is find the magnitude of vector ab and then part c is determine coordinates of point d on the vector cd if c is 2 minus 1 and cd equals to ab these two vectors are same i like you to pause the video answer this question and then look into my suggestions So let's plot these vectors. It'll be kind of simpler to answer if you could plot it on a coordinate plane. So let me just uh, make some rough lines here, kind of have a graph, so that you can visualize it better, right? So, and then we will see how to work with it. Okay, so few lines. So take a graph paper, plot the points. It'd be much simpler if you do like that. Now let's plot the tail and the head for the given vector a b. Tail is at minus one, minus two. That means minus one, minus two, and head is at two, 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 two. Join these two points with arrow at two, two. So that makes angle. Uh, that makes the vector a b. 
where this is minus 1, minus 2, and this point is 2, 2. So we have done the first part, which is sketch the vector AB. Now, let us see how to find the magnitude of vector AB. Magnitude is written kind of like this. Vector AB and these absolute values means positive always. Magnitude of this vector could be found by Pythagorean theorem. As you can see here, this is a right triangle, right? So square of change in x value plus square of change in y value, square root gives you the magnitude of this vector, right? So you could use this formula, x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. In our case, these are the values, right? This can be treated as x1, y1. This value is x2, y2. So 2 minus minus 1, square root of 2 minus minus 1, whole square, tell me, plus 2 minus minus 2. So that becomes plus, right? So we get square root of 2 plus 1, which is 3, 3 square, plus 2 plus 2, 4, 4 square. And that is 9 plus 16 square root, which is 25, square root is 5. So the length of AB is 5 units. Do you see that? So that is how you find length of any given vector. Now let's look into the third part, which is determine the coordinates of point D on vector CD so that C starts at 2 minus 1. That means 2 minus 1 will be this point. That is C for us. We want to find CD. We know it is parallel to this. It is along this line, correct? Now, easy way to figure out is if I start from A, how do we end at B? 1, 2, 3, right? So from C, 1, 2, 3, right? And up you have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So from this point, go up 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the point. So if you join this, you get your vector CD, which is of same length as AB. So that is your point D. Now you can read the coordinate. So from 0, 0, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So x value is 5. Y is 2 plus 1, 3. Correct? So, I mean, it should have been... So, so the difference is, difference in x values is this minus this, which is 3. So we went 3 units right, and that minus this, which is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 up, and you get... Uh, 5, 3 as the coordinates of point D, right? So that is how you find D. Now this is one way of finding D. The other way is, so we found D as 5, 3. Now, alternate method is, we know that point AB is I mean, the vector AB is minus 1, minus 2 to 2, 2, correct? This difference, correct? So, as you can see here, if I move from A to D, the change in X value is how much? Delta X is equals to 3, right? And change in Y value, 2 minus minus 2, delta Y is, is 4. So if I add these values 3 and 4 in C, I should get my D point. So D is to C, if I add 3, I get 5, 2 plus 3, minus 1 plus 4 is 3. Do you see that? So that is how you could do it even without graphing. So I hope the concept is clear. Very important. Now, Let's move on and do the last question. Question number six here is, vector AB is defined by the order triple, two, three, four. 
sketch the vector AB. That's part one. Second is find magnitude of vector AB. Now this relates to R3. So let's sketch our R3 plane. So that is y x, z axis, y and x. So the idea is first to form the base, which is using x and y. So let's go two units. This is along x axis. So here it is x axis. We go one unit and then two unit. So that point here represents 2, 0, 0. Correct? Now, we will move along the y direction, 3 units. So we go 3 units. 1, 2, 3. So this point reached here will be 2, 3, 0. So we are now in x, y plane. Do you see that? And now we can go up z four units one two three four and that point is the final point which we are going to write as two three four you get your vector from the origin to the point two three four and this is termed as the position vector a being the vector AB when we say then A becomes the tail and B becomes the head. Do you see that? That is your ordered triplet AB. Right? So we can write down that the vector AB is at times we do write like in square matrix like this form. How do we find the magnitude of AB? Well, if you look at it, it is a rectangular prism. So if I complete the prism, you will see that it's a diagonal of the prism. So let me just complete and show it to you. So that is the base, right? Then we went up four units. We go up four units. So as you can see, this is the diagonal. So you can always find the height of this using a square plus b square plus c square square root, right? So, so the magnitude of a b, which should be written like this, is square root of 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square square root, which is 4 plus 9 plus 16 square root, or it is 29 square root. Do you see that? So that is how you get magnitude of your vector AB, right? So I hope this exercise is useful in understanding the concepts of vectors. I'd like you to look into my playlist on 6.1 where we have taken many examples based on what we have learned here. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.